right. So our waiting room looks good. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Um, welcome everybody. My name is Yannette Cortez. I'm the graduate program recruiter for the School of Film and Television here at Loyola Marymount University. There we go. So at the School of Film and Television, we offer three MFA programs um, and a new program, which is a Master in Entertainment Leadership and Management. The three MFAs that we offer are in film and television production, writing for the screen, and writing and producing for television. Our MFA programs are all three-year full-time programs, while the Master in Entertainment Leadership and Management is um, a one-year program that can also be completed in two years if you opt in for the part-time option. Um, I will just give a brief overview of this program. I won't go too in-depth, um, just in case you missed the session that was hosted by the College of Business Administration, Monday, yesterday. Um, this is a joint program between both SFTV and CBA. So the MELM program prepares you to navigate the entertainment industry by exploring the complex dynamics between artistic expression and commercial viability while providing foundational skills in business management. So this sort of program is great for um, early professionals, students that are just graduating from their undergraduate studies um, who want to enter or move up within the entertainment industry, or the creative who's seeking business knowledge to advance their projects, as well as the international professional wanting to understand the global entertainment market. Um, this is a new program, so we are um, going to admit our first cohort this fall 2024. We're accepting applications currently, and we encourage our international applicants to apply by May 15th, um, given that there are certain deadlines regarding visas um, that you have to work against. So 15th of May is the deadline for that. And then for our domestic applicants, we ask you to submit your applications by May 31st. You typically hear within a month of submitting your application. Uh, because this is a joint program with the College of Business Administration, the tuition and fees um, will be a little bit different than what we have at our film school. School. So tuition for this program would be at sixteen ten a unit, which comes out to forty eight thousand three hundred at thirty units total. And if you have any questions regarding this program after I am um, finished with the next slide, please feel free to reach out to me at melm m e l m at lmu edu to learn more. Um, so with the core courses for this program in particular, you would take Introduction to Creative and Entertainment Industries, Entertainment Business Affairs, Master Producing, Management and Organizational Behavior, as well as Marketing Management and Finance and Accounting. You would then select three electives from the School of Film and Television and the College of Business Administration within their master's programs. And then your final um, project would be a capstone project. So you have two options, either the entrepreneurial producer route where you develop a piece of content or new venture concept to market or the entertainment strategies route, which is uh, consulting for real life organizations. So in this, with these capstones, we would help you uh, find placement with an organization in the industry to accomplish this. So jumping back into our MFAs here at SFTV, we are dedicated to showing a new generation how to create stories that matter, shape a more inclusive and equitable world, and launch successful careers in the world of entertainment. Really quickly, I wanted to introduce our graduate directors for our MFA programs. We have Gino Brancolini, who is the graduate director for film and television production, Waco Lynn for writing for the screen, and Mike Daly for writing and producing for television. Do you guys want to um, give a brief welcome? Yeah, I just want to uh, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us from wherever you are. I'm presuming there are people all around the world here. Uh, so thank you for joining, joining us. We look forward to answering any questions you might have and helping you to learn more about our programs. And likewise, welcome everyone. I'm very excited to, to connect with you all, uh, uh, maybe not one-on-one -on -one directly, but again, any questions you have about the Writing for the Screen program, which is focusing on feature screenwriting, um, save those questions um, after Yannette covers kind of the, the uh, you know, brushstrokes of what the program entails. Be happy to answer any kind of questions about, um, uh, yeah, the, the how we envision the program and um, um, how we move forward. Thank you. Cool, yeah, and I will, uh, 
follow up with all that. Um, I, I represent the writing and producing for television, which is a little bit of a hybrid. We do some producing in there to train you how to be a showrunner for television, uh, but it's largely a writing program for television. Um, but any questions you have specifically about this program, I'm here to answer. Awesome. Thank you, guys. So this is a bird's eye view of our Playa Vista campus. Um, we are located over here on the right side of what I like to call the boomerang because it's kind of shaped like a boomerang. Um, so we are located in Silicon Beach. Uh, we are five minutes down the hill from the main campus in Westchester. Um, so you do have access to both campuses. We have a shuttle that takes you back and forth um, between our two locations, but predominantly your courses will be at the Playa Vista campus here. And I'm going to play a quick video about our facilities so you can get a better insight of what we offer. Thank you for joining on this virtual tour of Loyola Marymount University's Playa Vista campus. Located in the heart of Silicon Beach, just down the hill from LMU's main campus, this 50,000 square foot facility has been conceived as an artful and inspiring mashup of state-of-the-art teaching and screening facilities, industry-grade post-production technology, and a genuine hub of creativity where students and faculty can work together to create, teach, and imagine. Upon exiting the elevator to our second floor, you're greeted with our reception area. To the left is the gallery, our event space, where multiple film festivals, symposiums, and conferences have been held. To the right is our Playa Vista Theater. Inside this beautiful 45-seat theater, students are treated to view their own work in industry standard Christie 2K projection with 7.1 surround sound pumping through its QSC speaker system. The theater is equipped with a video teleconferencing system and can play back most media formats for a large variety of classes, events, and screenings. Next to the theater is the film, television, and media studies screening room. This is a high-end screening classroom with an intimate atmosphere for teaching media studies as well as evaluating rough cuts of production projects. Just past the administrative offices are the main classrooms. Each classroom is modular and easily reconfigured to the needs of the class. Not only are there multiple screens and the ability for students to screen share, but the inside surface of the walls are fully writable, so students can stand up and sketch out storyboards, script beats, or filming ideas on the spot. To the left of the classroom area is the living room. This is the prime area for students to collaborate, relax, and discuss ideas. Many films are planned in this space, but it can also be used for completing homework and just hanging out. There are fully stocked vending machines and coffee is almost always hot and ready. Just past the living room is the student production office. In here, you'll find computer stations with movie magic, final draft, and everything you need to complete your pre-production. Standard forms, such as location and actor releases, are on the wall. At the end of the hall is the main black box stage. This multi-use space includes extensive soundproofing with an array of lighting units, drop-down green screen, and multiple technology hookups to make it a very flexible location for classes and for student filming. Past the cage and the second elevator lobby, you enter post-production row. This area is always bustling with students working on the finishing of their films. In addition to classrooms for editing and sound mixing, we have a state-of-the-art sound mixing stage. It has an Epson projector, QSC 7.1 theater quality sound, and an Avid S6 mixing console. In this room, students can hear exactly how their film will sound in a movie theater. Each editing suite has an iMac Pro loaded with Avid Media Composer, Pro Tools, Adobe Premiere, and DaVinci Resolve Studio. These comfortable and intimate spaces are big enough for a director, editor, and professor to all meet together and watch the cut but maintain a quiet and comfortable atmosphere for settling into a long session of picture or sound editing. As an added benefit, each room also has an HP Z31 Dream Color Calibrated Monitor so that you can do your color correction in any room. Color correction surfaces like the Tangent Element or Blackmagic Micro are also available for checkout so that you can have any tool you need right at your fingertips. The campus has two stages for Foley and ADR, or Automated Dialogue Replacement. In these rooms, you can record any footsteps you need on the open floor surfaces, record sound effects, record actors, and drop them all into your Pro Tools mix on our Avid C24 mix consoles. Past post-production row is another student meeting space. Either at the long conference table to the left or the more informal seating area to the right, students can hold pre-production meetings, meet with their professors, 
or sit and write while taking in the sunlight and Playa Vista scenery. Thank you for joining on this virtual tour of LMU's Playa Vista campus, and we look forward to welcoming you soon. Yay. I always love watching it. <laughs> um, okay, how do I... Do I have to stop sharing? Do I? Okay, I'm seeing Waco nod his head. Yes, sorry about that. Let me bring it back up. Um, if you find yourself in the area in Los Angeles or in Playa Vista, we do host campus tours. Um, so you will have the opportunity to uh, meet with me as well as any current students that we have on site that day um, that would be leading the tour for you. So you can register for a campus tour with us on our website. Okay, let's see. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry about this, guys. You would think this is my first time. Okay, <laughs> I do this all the time. All right. It doesn't want to start from the slide that I need it on. There we go. Okay, thank you for bearing with me. So um, by the numbers, SOTV ranks number five with The Wrap and number eight with The Hollywood Reporter. Um, throughout all three of our programs, we have 250 students. Um, we have about 12 countries represented. So we have um, students everywhere from, um, I don't know, Gino, we got, we got students from China, from Mexico, from Australia. Uh, yeah, from, 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 from Europe, from, uh, actually we have students from every continent but Antarctica. There you go. That's a cool way to put it. Um, and and you we work also, on that. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, we also have very, relatively small class sizes. Um, your general classes will be a 12 to 1 student to professor ratio, um, and they get a little smaller as you get into your specializations for the MFA in film and television production. Um, throughout the last year, we had approximately 600 productions in our film school, and that is possible because of the resources that we offer, and as well as keeping our class sizes small, it allows you um, to be able to create projects throughout your classes. Our students work with nine advanced cameras and 22 intermediate cameras, some of which were mentioned within that video that you just watched. And then here at the film school, we offer uh, plenty of events, networking, and career development opportunities. So we host different talks with um, executives and professionals that come in. Um, last year, one of my favorites was with the president of film and television from Hello Sunshine, Laura Newstetter. We also have um, executives come in from HBO. Um, this year, we acquired a partnership with Paramount um, to where our LMU students get to apply first before anybody else. Um, so we have opportunities like that that are constantly in the works and available to our students. Um, we also have different screenings, um, symposiums, talks, things of the sort, and career development opportunities. Uh, we have our own representative at the Office of Career and Professional Development. If you haven't registered for the session this evening, I do encourage you to go so that you can learn more about their resources. Um, but it is something great, I think, that we offer here at LMU. And then even as an alum, when you graduate, you still have access to that office as well. So to start, we are going to uh, begin with the Film and Television Production MFA. So it's a 60 unit program um, and regardless of your specialization, your first three semesters, you take the same courses with your cohort. The five areas of specialization that we offer are directing fiction, directing nonfiction, creative producing, cinematography, and editing. So your first year would consist of the courses listed here on the screen. So as you can see, it primarily consists of the fundamentals of filmmaking. So you would take intro to cinematography, intro to post-production, directing a short film, fundamentals of cinematic storytelling, 
Um, as well as in the spring semester, you have the choice between intermediate documentary pre-production or screenwriting for intermediate production, developing the short film to visual storytelling, production planning, and sound for production. In that second year of your fall semester, you would take these two classes, which are co-requisites, um, directing the short film three, directing actors, and seminar in sound. Then your second year, if you elect the directing fiction track, you would take seminar in American film, writing the narrative production thesis, the internship practicum course, and an advanced elective of your choosing. Uh, with the internship practicum, regardless, all specializations have to do an internship. Um, this course is zero units, which means you do not pay for it. And the Office of Career and Professional Development, again, because we do have our own representative that works with you, um, they assist you in finding internships based on your areas of interest. For the third year in directing fiction, you would take thesis production, seminar in international film, and an advanced elective. In the spring, you would do thesis post-production and then two electives of your choice within these categories. Um, your thesis, which is what your MFA would ultimately be evaluated on for directing fiction, would be an 8 to 15 minute narrative fiction film, as well as the festival submission plan and promotional materials. For directing nonfiction, your second year, um, that spring semester, you would then take seminar in American film, pre-production for documentary thesis, the internship, and the elective. That third year would then be, again, focused on your thesis, so thesis production, seminar in international film, an elective, and then the spring is thesis post-production and two advanced electives of your choosing. The thesis project for this would then be a completed documentary film, eight to 20 minutes in length, as well as the festival submission plan. For creative producing, you would take developing, selling, and monetizing digital content, producing masterclass, seminar in American film, and that internship. Your third year for creative producing entails entertainment business affairs, seminar in international film, and an elective of your choice. That spring is thesis portfolio and two electives of your choice. Your final deliverables for creative producing would be 25 to 60 minutes of content um, as a combination from your other projects in your courses, um, as well as a three-page reflection paper on your produced films, um, a complete project consisting of a Bible, pitching materials, business marketing strategy, and pitch presentations for an industry or a lookbook, sorry, and a lookbook as well as a web series idea composed of either written treatment and visual pitch or a completed digital POC and a riptone reel or visual sales tool for the web series TV show or feature. For cinematography, your courses would be seminar in American film, intermediate cinematography, color correction, and the internship course. Your third year would be advanced cinematography, seminar in international film, and an elective. In the spring, you would then take thesis portfolio class and two advanced electives. So your deliverable for the thesis on this would be a two to four minute cinematography reel, your online portfolio or website, which is then reviewed by the thesis committee, and a completed personal marketing package, as well as 25 to 60 minutes of content from those combined courses. For editing, we ask that you take seminar in American film, the internship practicum course, and advanced electives. So it would be six units total. Um, there are some courses that may be one to three units, so you get to pick and choose um, what that would consist of. For your third and final year in editing, you would take advanced editing, seminar in international film, and an elective. In the spring, you would take thesis portfolio and editing and finishing the short film. So your final deliverables for the thesis on this would be the two to five minute editing reel, your online portfolio and website, the trailers for completed films, as well as 25 to 60 minutes of content from the combination of these courses, um, as well as the post-production schedules, budgets, and workflows for each project. So next we're gonna move on to our screenwriting programs, writing for the screen and writing and producing for television. So writing for the screen your first year, is production fundamentals for screenwriters, elements of feature screenwriting, and advanced motion picture script analysis. Writing feature screenplay in the spring, as well as writing the drama uh, TV spec series or writing the comedy TV spec series. And then a um, film, television, and media studies elective. Your second year would consist of rewriting the feature screenplay, advanced feature screenwriting, and the business of entertainment. In the spring would be feature film and television adaptation, 
rewriting the advanced screenplay and um, a writing elective or writing the original drama pilot or the comedy pilot. Your third and final year is a little lighter, so you would be taking 15 units this last year. It would be thesis screenplay project, writing an original, and you have your choice between the writing the original drama or comedy um, pilot and then a writing elective. And then in the spring, you would take rewriting thesis screenplay project and feature film and television portfolio workshop. So there are a couple electives listed here for you to choose from. You can see the rest of them on our bulletin on our website. Um, but a couple of the popular ones are digital storytelling, playwriting or sketch writing, and writing video games. For writing for the screen, um, your final thesis portfolio will consi consist of three feature length screenplays, one episodic teleplay, and one original pilot for television. So we want to make sure that you are well-rounded and you get to touch a little bit into TV writing as well. But again, the bulk of it consists of your three feature-length screenplays. So moving on to writing and producing for television. Um, this is also 51 units, as I mentioned before, for writing for the screen. But your first year is introduction to television production, elements of television writing, and the history of television. Then in the spring, you would take writing drama TV series spec or the writing comedy TV series spec, feature film screenwriting, and the TV writer's room. In your second year, you would take both writing an original drama pilot and writing an original comedy pilot, as well as the business of entertainment. In the spring, you take planning ahead, producing fundamentals, rewriting the TV pilot drama or comedy, and then a writing elective of your choosing. In your third year, you would take pre-production for thesis project, two screenwriting electives, and then in the spring, you would take post-production for thesis and the feature film and television portfolio workshop. So your final deliverables for your thesis for writing and producing for television would include a five to 15 minute short, and then your choice between any of these four. So um, that is ultimately up to um, your advisor, or I'm sorry, your graduate director um, and culminating what your final project would be for this. And your portfolio would consist of three to five polished scripts that could include pilot screenplays, uh, plays, or even sketches. We host a really cool event here at the School of Film and Television. Um, this is hosted the week after commencement. So we call it First Pitch. This is an opportunity where you get to sit across agents and managers and essentially pitch your work um, that we just talked about that you would be leaving with that portfolio. So we've had um, great success. Our students really enjoy it. It's great. Um, it's a great opportunity for you to network and connect as well with people that are active in the industry. Um, but we have had, um, I'll, now, I'll let our graduate directors speak specifically to um, the folks that they've worked with um, and what their experiences have been like. I also wanted to mention that we will be hosting a graduate student panel um, in just a few short moments, and you can also pick their brains about um, what they're looking forward to in this aspect, because they're not there yet, <laughs> um, but almost. Another really cool thing that we do here at LMU is our screenwriting directory. So this is distributed to hundreds of industry professionals, um, both physically and digitally. Um, we take your headshots, we have your contact information in there, as well as a bio, and then the log lines of your um, projects that you have completed that are also ready to pitch and sell. Other special events that we host in addition to what I previously mentioned um, is Story Rush. So this happens the first week of orientation. This is a great opportunity to break the ice and get to know students from across all three MFA programs where you all get to come together and work to create a project and pitch it within your first week in the program. We also have working with partners, one-on-one uh, -on -one pitch practice, which is our screenwriting programs that participate in that, um, crew pitch, where we have um, students within production that pitch their projects to other students so that they can have enough crew um, to work on set. Uh, mixers, so throughout all three programs, we host mister mixers um, so that our students can get to know each other as well. Um, I think just on Sunday, right, you guys, we had the... Um, the an Oscar, Oscar party. <laughs> Uh, First annual. For three MFA programs are mixing together. Mike can probably talk more a bit about that. It was really big fun. Yeah, first annual Oscar viewing party for all grads. Yeah. Um, and it went over pretty well. And I think we're going to just build from there. Yeah. And people got dressed up too. Yeah. Very. Oh, uh, dressed up. We had a red carpet and we had a <laughs> photo uh, room. 
And Mike gave a prize to the person who guessed the most correct and who guessed the fewest correct. Yeah. <laughs> the Shazam Award this year. I love that. That's awesome. Um, so in addition to that, we offer, uh, we have film craft workshops, uh, mentorship through production, and then as I just previously covered, first pitch. Um, so our application for fall 2025 will be open in May. Um, our deadline has not been set quite yet, but you can expect it to be around um, November or December. So please do check back on our website for the specifics on that. And um, we do ask for a $50 application fee. We require your official transcripts from all institutions attended after high school. Um, your, uh, sorry, for the application itself, we ask for a personal statement. Um, production requires visual samples, um, as well as a portfolio list. And then for all three programs, we ask for creative written samples. Again, specifics on those requirements will be listed on our website once the application is live. Uh, video recording. So this is supplemental to your personal statement. Um, we want to get to know you a little bit better. And there are a couple questions prompting you to answer there. We also ask for a one page resume and two letters of recommendation. So we ask for one professional and one academic here. And then for production within your personal statement, we do want you to um, outline which specialization you're interested in pursuing. Um, we do not admit based on your specialization of choice. Again, you do not have to commit until your third semester to whichever specialization you're interested in, but we do wanna get a better sense of um, how many students would be in which specialization track. And then for our international applicants, we also require you to submit a transcript evaluation. This is a course by course transcript evaluation, which essentially um, not just translates your transcripts, but translates your GPA to ensure that you meet the minimum requirements. Uh, we do have a 3.0 GPA requirement. Um, if you do not meet that requirement, then we would ask you to submit the GRE to supplement that. And then for the uh, international students, again, we ask for the English language proficiency exam. Um, there are a couple options on our website that you can go with. We do accept um, Duolingo as well. It's a new one. Uh, so yeah. Down to um, the cost of attendance and financial assistance that we offer here at LMU. So for tuition, uh, it's fifteen thirty-six a unit at sixty units for film and television production, which comes out to a relative, uh, roughly uh, ninety-two thousand. And then for our screenwriting programs at 51 units, it's 78,000 roughly for tuition. And uh, we do offer financial assistance. So scholarships, that application will also be found within our general film school application. Uh, there's a question in there that asks if you're interested in being considered, as long as you select yes and submit the essay that's required, you will be considered, it is merit-based. So those scholarships are available uh, if you are domestic or an international student. And the way that they work is if you are selected for an award, you get that amount for all three years, as long as you are in good academic standing. So I can say that within the last year, over 50% of our graduate students did receive a scholarship award of some sort. We also have graduate assistantships, which are open to all students. Um, once you're admitted, you can apply through our uh, Workday portal at LMU, and they start at $18 an hour for up to 20 hours a week. And they would be um, available regardless of the school. So if you are a film school student, you can apply to work within any department at LMU as long as graduate assistantships are available. We have teaching assistantships as well if you're interested in that. And then, of course, federal loans, which are open to all domestic students. If you want more information on that, I encourage you to reach out to the financial aid office. And then payment plans, which the student accounts office um, runs, and those are open to all students as well. So once we release decisions, uh, once you submit your application and we release decisions, you can expect to hear from us around late March to early April. We do require a $500 deposit fee um, to secure your spot in the program. This is applied to your tuition as well. And then in terms of timeline, for those of you that are not local, um, last two weeks of August, we're pretty busy with events for orientation. So we would want you to um, plan to be here around that time. So to stay connected with me, I encourage you uh, to write this email down, take a screenshot, take a photo. Um, you can email me directly or give us a call. Um, you can, as I mentioned, visit us at Playa Vista. You can schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me, or you can meet with a current graduate student. 
Um, this event is not up to date, so I do apologize about that. But disregard that. Um, but before we start the graduate student panel, I did want to open it up to questions for our graduate directors. So feel free to unmute yourself or raise your hand. I am going to stop sharing very quickly. Yeah, do we have any questions? Uh, hello. Uh, my name is James Berner. I'm uh, interested in the uh, writing and producing for television. Uh, I just had a question. Uh, as someone whose uh, ultimate ambition is to uh, write for animation, uh, animated television, uh, I was wondering if there was, uh, There's. you obviously mentioned that there's lots of student productions going on, like 600 student productions. I wonder if there, if uh, within any of those productions, uh, writers are allowed to collaborate with um, uh, any animation students or any um, local animators, uh, if that's a, uh, yes. if those kinds of productions are happening. Yeah, so first of all, um, we do actually offer, and, and I think it's gonna continue because it's super popular, we offer an elective in writing for animation. Uh, with a with a uh, professor who has done a ton of animated television shows, um, but most animated television shows, as far as the writing goes, act like a regular show. Um, we also had two alumni that um, I don't know if you've seen the show Greenberg with uh, John Hamm as a voice, but that was created by two of our alums, L uh, LMU alums, and they both teach for us. Came out Grimsburg, yeah, it just came out. Yeah, Grimsburg. Sorry, Grimsburg. Um, and uh, okay. and and for the WPTV project. We have had several people do an animated project. Uh, it takes a little more, um, you know, hind or forethought. You have to be sort of ahead of it because it takes obviously a little more time. We have an amazing undergrad animation program um, that you can draw from. And uh, we highly recommend uh, students that are interested in animation go to those screenings at the end of every semester to sort of see what's out there and what might, you know, vibe with you. Um, and a lot of those students are eager, you know, especially after they graduate to sort of like, collaborate and get some more work under the reel. You know, Mike, we also Mike, we we also have um an alum uh working on uh, Bojack Horseman. Oh, currently as an animator or uh as a writer. Oh I'm okay. pretty sure. Yeah. Well Karen was an alum or she was a intern on it. But oh, okay. um yeah and then and then I think uh Chickadilly was there as well as an intern and then she went to um Actually, yeah. So one of our alums actually wrote for um, uh, Tuco and B Bad or Betty or uh, whatever it was. This it was not a spinoff of BoJack, but it was uh, same writers, a couple of the same writers. James, to answer your question, I, I not to confuse, but you know, I teach in the uh, writing producer for TV. I teach a thesis production class. So, meaning you could, we have students who basically self taught themselves animation and yeah. the did everything themselves. But what Mike was saying. You could write animation, not to actually make it, right? But if you choose to decide your third year, that thesis production, you want it to be animated, you can draw from an immense talent pool because we have an animation major undergraduate and there's faculty member, we have Oscar winning faculty who's chair, you know, nines, you know, I'm not sure if you know that short Oscar, uh, I mean, in Tim Burton produces feature version of it. Uh, Shane Acker, he's a chair of the department. So the faculty resources that you can draw and that we can advise. And that's what one of the thesis students did. And she did an incredible animated short for the thesis production. So there's opportunity, but just know that you can just write animated, you know, pilots, you know, going or, or you know, specs as you move forward through the program. So sorry, Mike, not to intercede into, but just because she was my student last year. Yeah. Great. We do have another question in the chat. Uh, what are the cameras that are available for student productions? Uh, yeah. It. It, it depends upon the class. Uh, I mean, we have top of the line cameras. We have Aries. You could actually shoot on film if you want. You can shoot on, on, on uh, 16 or 35 millimeter film. It's expensive. Um, but in, the, in, your, in your more basic classes, you have access to our, uh, our less expensive gear. And excuse me, my cat's here too. And as you, uh, as you get into the more advanced classes, you get access to everything we have. And we have, we have pretty much anything you'd find in any professional production house. I love your invisible cat, Gino. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little weird. 
petting my invisible <laughs> cat. <laughs> um, additional question yeah. in the chat. Thank you for answering that, Gino. Um, do students in the directing track have the opportunity to take advanced selectives in other focuses, fo focus areas, classes like advanced editing, intermediate cinematography, et cetera? Yes. <laughs> yes. And in fact, there's there are even uh, one or two advanced writing classes they can take. Uh, there are some slots that, that are opened up there, but they but there's a there's a whole list of electives that are available to multiple um, disciplines, multiple multiple specializations. And I, I don't know if it, if it was clear in the, uh, in the in the the presentation, but you choose your specialization in uh, usually around November of your third semester. Your your coursework is the same those first three semesters, and then around um, around November of that semester, you're taking a course called Prod Six Hundred, which is your first really significant film, and in that and uh, that's kind of the make or break film, and then most students will decide at that point what they want to specialize in for their remaining three semesters. And then there are electives that are available for particular specializations. Uh, and there are um, a lot, there's a lot of sort of like cr cross uh, elective specialization. You know, you could be a directing major and take a, you know, a, a, a cinema, an advanced cinematography course. Although we, you know, encourage people to sort of concentrate on their specialization. Thank you. Uh, another question in the chat, are we encouraged to launch our projects to the industry before we graduate? What if we get a TV deal while in school? This is an interesting question because it has happened, has it not, guys? <laughs> That's a writer's question. <laughs> yeah, and I can answer it. I mean, if if something like that happens, we uh, have, have actually done, I'm sorry, there's construction going on. I was trying to time it right. Uh, we do have... Um, We've had given people leave of absence um, so that they can go do that and they can even come back and finish their degree if they want. Yeah, if you take a leave of absence, you have two years to come back without reapplying. So, uh, you know, if you if something wonderful happens and you want to step out and then maybe come back, you can do so pretty easily within two years. Yeah. Uh, with um, well, We also have a student who staffed on the show was still a full-time matriculate student, Rebecca Murga, right? She was on Swagger and she stole the pilot for Spike Lee directing while she was a student and she even finished her thesis production. Yeah. For all I mean, that. So and even even people have left right. for writers assistant jobs because if if it's something that could lead right to writing, a hundred percent. But yeah. I do also if it's just a job job, I always say if they want you now, they're gonna want you more next year. So uh finish the degree. And also I think this is a good point uh to point out that you you own your intellectual property at LMU. So any film you make any any screenplay, uh, screenplay you write, any future film script you write, you own that property, uh, and you know which is uh, you know gives you the ability to market it and and do with it as you wish. Thank you, Gino. That actually answers part of one of the questions that we have in the chat. So the supplemental question to that is: Could the thesis film? Be, could the thesis be filmed outside of the U.S.? Uh, yes, we have had we have had thesis films made in Mongolia and in, in China. Um, uh, it's possible, it's not easy, but it's, but it has happened and it's, you know, it's a little more difficult. Uh, and there are things that need to be worked out with our, our production administration team. Uh, but we have had students film outside the United States. Absolutely. And I, I do want to also touch on a really incredible resource that we have at LMU, our student production office. Um, they help you when it comes to acquiring permits. Um, I know they help with casting, they help with locations. Um, they're they're really well-rounded in everything that you could possibly need for that. Um, okay. Another question, does the program allow for full-time students to work full-time? That is difficult. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we we're essentially a full time program. Uh, we have had students who have attempted to work full time. In fact, I had a student last last fall who was working full time, uh, but he was struggling. He was struggling to to keep up with both his academics and meet his responsibilities at work. So we we discourage that. But uh, you know, I, I I think the answer to all the to that kind of question is it depends upon the individual. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not so presumptuous that I would tell you what what you are or are not capable of. 
but it takes a really exceptional person to work full time and and complete a uh, an MFA. A really a, a person who's really exceptional at time management. <laughs> We've had students uh, where they are working full time, but they have some flexibility in terms of working remote, you know, on their job. So on the days of class, that's in the afternoon, they're able to do it. And then in screenwriting, um, their their electives, their options to take night classes, but it is a full time program. So priority is school. But if you have flexibility in your job where, you know, one, a couple of days a week, you could have three hour block out, you know, whatever it is, it depends on where your job is and how much requirement for you. I just I, a lot of our students work internships and and they or, or some even part time where they where they're able to block like a day a week that they're able to, able to keep open for their for their job. You know, like they schedule all their classes on maybe Tuesday and Thursday and then, you know, like Wednesday or Friday is their work day. Uh, but it but, it you know, it, it takes a lot of careful scheduling and a lot of really good time management. Definitely. Um, another good question in the chat. What would you say are the most attractive qualities in prospective applicants? So passion. You want to take this? Passion. I'd say I would say I would say passion. Passion, a uh, uh, great collaborative attitude. Uh, I've um, uh, I ran a production unit for twenty years before I started teaching full time, and my belief was if you give me somebody with a good attitude who's passionate, I can teach them what they need to know. But if you give me somebody who maybe already has the skills but a bad attitude, and uh, a, a luck last a luck. Um, a lackluster attitude, then it, it's difficult to work with them. I, I would add that we also look for like unique perspectives. And I know that's not easy. Sometimes, um, you know, this it's actually what we work on a lot in the writing classes is to try to figure out what is your unique perspective. But if you have, a, have something or if you come from um, a background that's unique and different, um, that's always what we're looking for, because we know that that's leads to more interesting stories for the industry and um, that's been doing really well for them. So at least for writing for the screen program, it's definitely the importance that we look for our ability to articulate your lived experiences. Right. So that kind of goes into the perspective. It doesn't be so unique. Like you think like, Oh my God, what an extraordinary story, but can you articulate that emotional experience of your, because everyone's emotional experience, I think is different your 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 angle on it but you're able to connect obviously universal to the audience and that's at least for writing for screens there because and don't worry at least for again from i couldn't speak for writing for the screen program don't have to feel to written like 10 feature length screenplays <laughs> before you can apply because i feel like our program which is a three-year program right by the way you guys see the tuition just know that tuition is total for three years i i for someone going to the arts when I was a grad student, if I saw this, like, I think it's a steal, right? You know, going through, by the way. Um, anyways, going back, able to articulate that. And then because our program is there to train you how to do the craft. But what really stands out is for, like what Mike mentioned, your perspective, you're able to articulate who you are and what you say, what you need to say. Uh, something to say and entertain at the same time, of course. Don't feel like entertaining doesn't mean you have nothing to say entertaining but having something to say so at least for that that's kind of like what we look for in writing for screen program thank you guys uh one more question in the chat so regarding the admissions process is there any specific way the faculty is matched with candidates for interviews um no so when we select students for interviews you whoever you end up with in that interview room is at random um because we have so many happening simultaneously uh, at the same time. Um, it, there's no telling who you will end up with. It just depends on which session you register for. Um, and we just go from there. And it depends on who's available for that interview. Yeah. Right. Because <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we fit those interviews in our schedules. Uh, yes. we, we, we tell, we tell you net when we are available and, then, <laughs> and she, but, uh, and she lets us know who we're interviewing. <laughs> I will add that Yannette does sort of give us the, um, your application back. So we are able to review before there it goes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs>
Yeah, so um, your applications are reviewed by the faculty that would be teaching you essentially. Um, so it, again, those are also distributed at random. They're not distributed based on um, your specialization of choice if you're applying to production. Um, and our, our graduate directors are looking at them as well. So you have uh, a well-rounded uh, process, a holistic review process of all of your application materials. Um, so everything is weighted equally, I would say, um, in the evaluation process. Um, do we have any more questions? Uh, you know, I would also add to that, that your, your admissions materials are reviewed by more than one person. It's not a single person right. who's, who's making this decision. You have multiple people uh, looking at your admissions materials. Thank you, Gino. Yeah, any additional questions at this time? I have we a sure, go ahead, Daniel. So, Daniel, um, can we see you? Oh, okay. Uh, I am actually calling from China right now, so let, let me see if it's affecting it's if it's affecting the Wi-Fi. Okay, oh, okay. okay. you're good. Okay, Thank so. You. I already applied to uh, to the uh, production, I mean, film and television production program, and I actually already got the inter did the interview, and uh, I just came to the open house to see if I if there's any like hidden gem or something I missed, uh, during research, and during my research I saw something quite interesting that the Loyola Marymount has to uh, have to offer, which is called a uh, Delta Kappa Alpha program Theta chapter, which is like a program. Uh, I, I saw that it's a program connecting students from different school to work with each other. Uh, it's basically, I, I th thought it's a basically great way to network with students from different background. Um, I was just wondering what are some of the activities that you guys do for this program um, in case I missed anything on the website? Uh, Gino, can you speak to what GKA does? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not very familiar with their activities. So I actually, I, I can't uh, accurately speak to what they do. I, I, I don't know, Michael Waco, do you it's know? It's the, about? it's, that's the um, fraternity, right? Yes. That's, yeah. Um, and, and it's largely been um, sort of populated with undergrads, but there, there, we've had a few grads that have gotten involved in, and we're trying to get more because the grads that got involved have found it to be incredible not only connecting to the undergrads, but you're right. They do they do set up stuff with other schools and um, they, they've they really gotten to know other people around the LA area that are in film school. And that's always helped. So um, you, one in one one particular WPTV student, uh, which is my program, who's going to be producing his thesis next year, I think he's he's really found like great crew that's like outside of LMU um, to help him. So that's that is absolutely Aspect, an idea guest speakers and just like any um yeah. it's like a fraternity basically but obviously you know all anyone can join it's not like frat frat, frat. um but mm -hmm. like it, some schools have business fraternities right so similar for networking for team but also there's a social aspect to it yeah thank you daniel anyone else Okay, because we will start the graduate student panel early um, if there are no additional questions for our graduate directors. Uh, if there's no one else to, who wants to ask a question, I actually have one more question. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I yeah I actually just came up with this question when you guys were talking about the MELM program. I didn't know about um, th this degree when I was applying, but um, it does sound very interesting. The thing is, I my main interest and focus is with pro, uh, film and television production, which I, I believe I need to, uh, I want to really improve my skill on the creative side of filmmaking. But in, my ultimate goal does include like um, opening my own production company. So for I believe that for me, um, learning the business side of filmmaking is uh, is also very important. Which is why I was wondering for students who are like me who wants to both understand uh, get familiar with the creative side and the business side of filmmaking, but not able to, for example, because I don't think Loyola Marymount offers like a dual degree or anything. So I was wondering uh, for students like me, do you guys think there's like like any good way to basically improve my skill? Sure. Uh, oh, Gino, do you want to? Yeah, take it? I, 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 you might consider a creative producing specialization. As a as a production MFA student, uh, the the creative producing specialization uh, includes more of the business side of filmmaking as opposed to the strictly creative side. You know, it's a lot about about marketing and branding, and uh, you know, and those and those and, and project development, uh, which is and, and so you can 
you could take you could take courses in uh, you could either specialize in creative producing or you could take an elective or two in creative producing uh, at, with a different specialization like directing. That, uh, thank you so much for that because uh, I, I obviously I, I believe that my main focus would still be directing uh, in, in fiction um, in my current degree but I I am very interesting to take a, a, at least a couple of electives from um, for, from a degree that is more related to the business side so thank you very much for that and, and also I think related to this is that since we are in Los Angeles we have you know dozens and dozens of guest lecturers, programs, speakers, people coming from the industry on the business side who are doing special programming, um, you know, like, you know, like maybe, a, a, you know, a, a Monday night uh, session where, you know, they, you know, a group of executive producers come in and talk about developing a project. So they're like, there are uh, co-curricular activities that I think would, would also be beneficial for you from the business side that are um, beneficial for any, for any student. But the, the MELM program is from, you know, I understand it's a new program. It's going to be hands-on and practical. And like, if you're talking about launching a company, so that I think that would require like a full attention on that. But again, you, there are electives you can take on creative producing, but I don't think it's going to be that direct, like, because I think the business school and the school film TV, the program together is fostering that. So you're really knowing, you're really kind of getting a chop of the know-how and put together a production company. That's like the Hollywood standard and how that would run. Yeah. But the but the mail program isn't really dealing with the creative side. So like if you're you know if you're if your interest is more on the creative side, then you want to be in the production MFA. If your if your interest is strictly business, then maybe the mail program is a good direction to go. And the mail also cover like how to work with writers in terms of like develop material with the writer, right? But I don't think that's the majority. That's not the bulk of it. The bulk is right. It's part of it. Part of the creative producing, but it's also the practicality of like the business sense. Yeah. Right. And to add as well, Daniel, if getting experience with the camera and editing and learning how to make film is also something that's very integral to you, the MFA in film and television production would be more within what you, the road that you want to take because the master's in entertainment leadership and management does not offer that. So I do want to clarify those, the distinction between the two. Yeah, thank you very much for that. That really uh, clears a lot of things for me. And I'm um, international students, you know, Craig McBraw, it's only a one for international students. It's only yes. an option. It's only a one year option. But if you're not international students, you could do part time for two years. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Because for me, I believe that my main main focus will be the creative side. But knowing that I also have opportunities to basically learn a, a, a learn a, gain a little bit of uh, knowledge and experience for, uh, in terms of the business side, it is very comforting to hear. Great. It's it's also uh, useful, I think, sometimes to take to do intern like we you know we we require you do one internship, but we recommend you do multiple internships. I think it's sometimes useful to do an internship kind of outside of your your main area of interest. Like an internship is a good way if you if you're really interested in in creating, then an internship in some uh, some sort of business entity or product you know a a, um, a management entity or uh, uh, some kind of agency is a good way to supplement your classwork. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Well, if there aren't any additional questions, we can get started with the grad panel. Anything else? I had a question. Uh, and first, thank you all for putting this together. We really uh, do appreciate it. I uh, was also interviewed recently uh, for the graduate program and I was wondering about the internships. Uh, you mentioned recently management and agency. So would this include companies like UTA and uh, it could it could i mean you can you know you can do an internship anywhere where you can find an internship uh, you know and we uh, the the career and professional development office will helps identifying internships uh but if you come to us with an internship idea that can be formalized into an internship course like if you have a connection at, at uta and you know, and, and, you know, somebody says, Hey, well, you know, have you ever thought about doing an internship with us? We, you know, we can arrange that as that intern, as that internship course. And, and we have people who do internships, and I think pretty much all aspects of the business. Wouldn't you agree with that? You know, I, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, so if you have a, in, a company, you can bring it in because what they do is they want to make sure the company is vetted 
obviously a place like VUTA is obviously a very formal programs, but they just want to make sure that you're not just grabbing coffee and not learning anything, right? So the office want to make sure it's protecting you, protecting one another to make sure that it is an internship where you're learning, right, going through. So that's only a purpose. So if it's on the list of things that they have at the development office, professional office, then you could bring obviously companies in, you know, and they can get vetted. Yeah. And that that uh, somebody was mentioning uh, the the possibility of, say, for instance, you doing an internship outside your your specialization. So if you are creative producing or show running or mm -hmm. uh, and you intern as a first AC or second AC or even as a, a cinematography shadow, if you will, <laughs> for a friend uh, for a project. Is that encouraged? It, because, of course, we're all being asked to do hyphenates at certain points in our careers. And as we are still developing within that first, between first year and third year of our academic career in a uh, master's program, what say you? Uh, should we focus on specialization early or uh, even, or you said uh, the internships should definitely be outside that parameter? But I, I, I think the scope or range that you would limit it at. I think there, there are two things here. One is I, any experience you get in any area is going to be beneficial. Like I, you know, I always thought that one, one of the great aspects of my career is in my, my first job was, uh, was I pretty much did everything. And, you know, and as a consequence, I, I ended up as a much better manager because it's because I knew how to do at least something in most aspects of filmmaking. Um, and I think it's useful to to supplement your specialization with areas that you might not be as familiar with. But it's also useful to to you know to do internships in your specialization. So the idea is to do as many as you can, you know, and 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 build that network throughout the industry because in, the internships are often a job to employment, uh, and uh, you know you you, you want to build a net. One of the big advantages of going to film school is to build a network among your peers, among your fellow students, and within the industry. Um, Thank you. Great. Any other additional questions? No? All right. Grad directors, any final words before I boot you out? <laughs> <laughs> Just it was it was nice seeing you all, and if you uh, if you have specific questions and want to um, uh, address them to me directly, Yannette can help you contact me. Yes, I would uh, second that. And uh, although Yannette ha has a lot of knowledge, <laughs> but um, uh, we're happy. Uh, my program is fairly new, and it's a little complicated. So any questions you have are always great to uh, be fielded. Great. Likewise. Thank you, everyone. Pleasure kind of Zoom meeting you. Some have, <laughs> you know, some don't. So, <laughs> but hey, we're in one place together. That means we've connected somehow. And hey, my, my, my final comment is that you are about to launch on a wonderful journey, regardless of whether or not you join us or you join some other film school, you know, take advantage of every opportunity you have. Uh, I like to say we put a feast out for you but you got to step up to the table and take advantage of it. Yeah. It's very exciting, y'all. Thank you guys so much. Of course. Take care. Take care. All right. Those of you, um, my current graduate students, if you could please raise your hands, I'm going to pin you and um, we can get down to the, all right, okay. see some. Thank you, Jamaria. All right, cool. Let's see, I'm going to pin you and Kate. Thanks for being here, y'all. There we go, pin. Do we have anyone else? I thought I saw Onur. Yeah, I'm going to pin you as well. All right, so we have graduate students here from the film school from all years. There we go. Is this everyone? Am I missing anyone? Kara, there you are. Oh wait, I've already pinned you. Okay, sorry. I'm okay. Here we go. All right. So, oh, and Matt, right? No. Okay. I'm like, wait, didn't you apply? <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> all right. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, this is going to be really cool and easy. Um, so for all of you that are participating today, that are our guests, um, it really is just open questions. Our graduate students are amazing. They're very transparent. You can ask them anything from their, you know, process throughout the application, um, what their time at LMU has been like so far. Um, but first, I'm going to ask everyone to start um, by introducing themselves, the program that they're in, what year they're in, and why they chose LMU. So can I ask Jamaria to start? Of course. Hey, y'all. Um, my name is Jamaria Mason Price. You can't tell by the accent. I am from the South. I am a first year writing for the screen. And I chose LMU because I'm all about collaboration. I'm all about learning. And I want it to go to a place where it's not competition because the people you're with are nine times out of 10 people you're going to be working with. Do I popcorn it or? Yeah, go ahead. You popcorn. Okay. Okay. Olivia, you're up. <laughs> Hi, I'm Olivia. I'm a second year in the WPTV program, the writing and producing for TV program. Um, I went to LMU for undergrad and in the film school. I studied screenwriting and I loved just like the culture of the film school and how it never felt like Jamari was saying, it never felt it never felt like competition. It always felt like we were lifting each other up and working together. And I later on decided that I wanted to teach eventually, which led me to the WPTV program because I wanted to get a master's degree. But um, yeah, it was definitely the right choice for me. I'm really, really enjoying the program. Um, Kara, your turn. Hi, um, my name is Kara. Um, I'm a third year uh, writing and producing for TV student. Um, I came to um, LMU because it is one of the places that has this kind of specific uh, TV related program because um, I do like the collaborative nature of television. Um, I studied theater in undergrad and so I was into playwriting a little bit, but I was like, it's so, it's so alone. I feel like playwriting. And so I liked the idea of like getting to be in a writer's room and that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, that's one of the reasons that I am here. Um, guess popcorn to Kate. Hi everyone, I'm Kate. I am a third year student in the film and television production program. Um, uh, my specialization is directing fiction. Um, one of the big things that led me here, I came from a very theoretical um, background in my undergrad and I really wanted the opportunity to work hands-on with equipment and with collaborators um, and as Olivia and Jamaria said, um, the collaborative aspect of this program was something that really excited me, even in talking to current students at the time and talking to professors. Um, that was the big thing that they mentioned they loved about um, this program. So that was something I was really looking for. And that's something that I've really found to be true here. Um, I'll popcorn to honor. I'm choosing the directing track next year. And I chose LMU because it came highly recommended by our friends. Um, we value like three things when choosing a film school. It's, it's the mentor. Uh, it's the, the network you will create with the friends and the uh, equipment uh, in the location. And you was excellent in for all four of these. So that's why I chose. Hi everyone, my name is Ariana Dallas. I am a first year writing for the screen student. And the reason that I chose LMU, I'm pretty sure you already heard it a thousand times, but the word collaboration is really big here. Um, the other reason that I chose LMU was because I'm a East Coast girl, I am from Jersey. So this was a leap of faith for me. Um, the school chose me, so I chose them back as well as they 
gave me the energy that they allowed, they're going to allow you to grow. It's not just coming to the school and, you know, just coming here and saying, oh, this is what I know and this is what I'm going to apply. And then it's a one man show. Like it really is big on collaboration and you get to learn a lot here. So, yeah. Great. Thank you, everybody. Um, so I, I will open it up to questions. Um, if no one has questions, I have a few to start. But do any of you have questions for our current grad students? You can feel free to unmute yourself, raise your hand, whatever you want. Yeah, Lauren. Uh, yeah. Hi. I apologize if there's noise. I feel like birds are swarming me right now. Um, but what Ariana and Jamaria said about being from New Jersey and the South, I'm from Louisiana. Um, so I was kind of curious about where y'all's home states kind of influenced um, how you kind of meld into the LMU culture, specifically because it's not really a typical college campus that you think of where the SFTV is. So I was wondering how that kind of transition uh, of community happened for you guys, specifically LA as a city itself, I guess. Of course, you make me go first. So I'm from South Carolina. Um, I'm from the, the country, true country girl. And just the city, y'all. Like, I, I didn't really know this was the city. <laughs> okay. But basically being there, it gave me, you know, my little country girl ways. I have true Southern hospitality. I'm going to tell you now, they don't have Southern hospitality down here. You have to make it your own. You have to tell, you got to say, hey, you have to speak. They're nice people, but you know how we do it down at the South. We just, hi, how you doing? Not everybody too friendly, but it's okay. You make it your own. What I can say I bring from South Carolina was just, like I tell you, my spirit, my personality. I feel like that gets me by nine times out of 10. Um, and just good vibes. That's all I got to say. But you'll do fine here. It is nerve wracking, don't get me wrong. But your cohort, the people around you is what's going to really make you. Uh, yeah, uh, piggybacking off of Jamaria. Um... Sometimes it's it's not the best energy, but um, it is about what you make it. Um, and me being from Jersey, I am from the city. I am a city girl, so the city the city is the layout is different. Um, it's a very huge city, um, but it's it's a great like area. I love being here, um, and I think what I bring uh, coming from Jersey is my culture. Um, I have a very big community of African Americans. So the stories that I want to tell is all about representation. And I think that's what I bring to the table because me and Jamaria are only two out of three black women in our entire cohort. So I think that is something that we, all three of us bring to the table as well. So I think whatever it is that you're passionate about, um, the kind of stories you want to tell, I think that is going to be the thing that makes you stand out. So, yes. Yeah, thank you guys so much. You're welcome. Any additional questions? James, go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, my name's James. I'm uh, interested in uh, the uh, writing for, writing and producing for television program. Uh, when I was taking my uh, undergrad in screenwriting, um, I found both, in part because I'm a more a shyer, more introverted guy, and also because my entire college experience got cleft in half uh, by COVID, uh, that I had a hard time uh, finding other people to work with uh, collaboratively. And even if I could take the initiative, I couldn't find the time to balance it with my schoolwork and I, I was wondering, uh, it's sort of a two-pronged question. A, um, is this a kind of community where, uh, you know, uh, you know, how does one balance making sure that you um, get your, your required schoolwork done and keeping your, per and your personal projects and the projects you're working on with others? How do you keep that straight? Uh, and not make sure you're not overbooking yourself uh, while still taking advantage of all the opportunities you, you got. And the, um, especially for people who um, 
might not be uh, initially as outgoing, how is it for finding your little pod to work with and meeting new people? Um, maybe for someone who doesn't, it doesn't come naturally to. Um, um, yeah, I can. Oh, do you want to go first, Kara? Like, or... Oh, um, yeah, you can go. You can go. I'll go after. Okay. <laughs> um, I think at least my experience, the WPTV program has been that there is an innate social aspect to it because it's so TV is such a collaborative medium. Um, all of our classes are run like writer's rooms. So we're all like sitting around a table and working together, like having conversations with each other the entire class. So it's pretty, at least I found it pretty easy to connect with people because of just the nature of how our classes are run. Um, and I also think WPTV is quite good at um, planning little events and like, just like, place things where we can all hang out together and there are also like other people will organize outside of outside of school they'll be like oh hey a bunch of us from this program and this program are all going to Brennan's it's just a nearby bar tonight everybody should come and hang out and you just go and you meet people that are your I mean I don't know that's I think it's at least it, for the socialization aspect I feel like it's sort of in, an inherent part of the program yeah, I would agree. Um, and also just from like, a, I am kind of painfully shy um, upon first like, you know, meeting. So I feel like that was kind of something where I was like, I have to step out of my comfort zone for this. But honestly, because like Olivia said, the way that they have us in class, it does kind of force you to talk to anyone, everyone anyway. Um, so like, I feel like by the, it's pretty easy to kind of fall into a group. Um, I would also say in terms of like collaboration and stuff, you're going to all of those people in your cohort are going to be the people that you're collaborating with anyway. Um, if you do want to, if you do want to find the time to do projects outside of school, though, I would say it's probably a lot harder. It's probably a bit harder to do when you first get here because there's just a lot going on work wise. Um, so, but I think that these are the people for sure that you are going to be spending a lot of time with. And so you will just kind of get to know them by nature of that, honestly. Did that answer your question? Uh, it, it answered uh, one part of it. The uh, other question part is like, uh, how do you balance, uh, you know, the stuff that's required for school, like your classes with the with a lot of the um, outside extracurricular uh events internships personal projects how do you keep the balance so your uh your 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 schoolwork is not suffering but you're taking advantage of all of the opportunities uh you have but you're also not uh crashing like a jet into the mountainside um <laughs> absolutely would anyone from any program want to answer that because so I feel like you all balance different <laughs> there's a lot of nodding uh, <laughs> because grad school is a beast in and of itself so um, yeah any any one of you I'll say it's very difficult um, to balance all of those things um, for me personally it's I think looking at each semester kind of looking at what my priorities are um, during that time, obviously, you know, doing schoolwork is a huge one, but um, it is, you do have to pick and choose some things. Um, there is not enough hours in the day for you to do everything you want. Um, but that being said, I have had, I have had time to have an outside job. I've had time to do an internship, to go see film screenings, um, to work on projects that are outside of my own work. So there is time. Um, but yeah, it's all about choosing what's most important to you. Um, and also like remembering that outside experiences also help you become a better storyteller um experiencing like new things um 
is kind of in inspiring. So not leaving that to the wayside as well. Um, let me tell you something, trial and error. <laughs> you're going to have trial and error because, you know, you get here, you, you're excited. Like first semester, I was outside Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now I'm inside. Like I'm tired now. I, I, it kind of caught up to me. Um, You really do need to find balance. You do need to find time for yourself. Like Kate said, in order for you to get ideas and creativity, you have to get outside of SFTV. After a while, those walls are going to be too gray. It's going to be a little too cold and it's just too much noise. You just want to go outside. So I would definitely say you're going to make mistakes. You're going to have, you're going to be up at one sometimes for great. And like, why didn't I do this the other day? Sometimes sleep does win. And if it does, let it. Also, as Jamaria mentioned, please always bring a jacket with you to class. It is freezing in there. It's free. It's it's all. They always keep the AC really low in the. It's such a nice campus and it's such a nice building, but it's always very cold. So don't forget your jacket. It'll feel like home, uh, Northeast Ohio. <laughs> that is sound advice, everyone. Thank you all. Um, any other additional questions from our guests? Brendan, go ahead. Yeah, hi. So uh, I'm really interested. So we're talking, you know, moving across the United States and all this kind of stuff. Um, I feel like there is so much there. Uh, I'm from PA. Uh, I feel like, there, you know, there's the allure of I'm in my undergrad right now. There's the allure of going to a master's program, going to a film school, which I've never really, you know, done before. Uh, going to LMU, which is like, you know, a hugely prestigious film school, and then going across the United States. So I'm curious, uh, especially for those who, you know, had that type of move, what is like the most surprising thing you found whenever you went and did that jump versus like, what is something that, you know, maybe kept you going that was, you know, something that wasn't that surprising? What was something that was, oh, this is very much like home. This isn't as grand as I thought it was. Or was it all just scary? Because if it's all just scary, then yeah, that's fair. Okay, so quick little story, right? It's the whole thing is scary. The entire thing is scary. I will tell you right now that I went on a leap of faith. I'm a very spiritual person. I came here uh, to move in. And as soon as I got my keys, I lost them. Then I had three hours to try to figure out if I could get a locksmith to get inside my apartment. And then I would have to pay almost four to $500. Then the second day I broke my arm, walking my mom out. And then she was on a plane leaving. And I could not call her. It's tough, okay? Sometimes making the leap in the faith is is very, it's very tough. But I think if you have a passion and a drive and an ambition for what you want to do, and if it is a dream of yours, I think that will carry over. Um, and then we had orientation. I met a lot of beautiful people. Um, obviously, you're going to a film school. Everybody is connecting just basically solely on that. So I think once you learn from different people who also come from different backgrounds, I know another person who's in my cohort that's from Pennsylvania. Um, it, it is a jump and it is a leap, but I think once you find your purpose and your voice, then I think that will be enough to carry you over. I'm gonna tell you, mine was the opposite. I had a great move. I was peaceful. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was peaceful. I'm like her. I'm very spiritual. I asked for signs. Um, signs were there. I'll never forget the hotel I was at. This one man, I've never seen him. He works there. He just came up to me because I was sitting out downstairs with my mama. We had a long conversation. He was just like, well, this is meant for you. That whole two weeks I was at the hotel, I didn't see him anymore after that. So I always consider him as my blessing in disguise. Like I said, it was peaceful. Um, nothing like home. Unless home is different from you, nothing like home. It's very on the go. It's very much a lot of moving, a lot of motion. Like I said, I'm from the country. We have peace. Here, it's a lot of noise. But it's all, all in all, like she said, hers was rough. Mine was good. It's all about you, what you believe in. Um, Coming in with a good vibe, coming in with a good energy, just knowing that you're here for a reason and that they chose you for a reason. So just hold on to that and take that and prosper. How about the rest of our students? Are all of you from Southern California? Honor. Um, I'm I, I came from Turkey. 
and it it was fine i don't know i don't i didn't have a bad experience it was great there's like 11 hour uh, time difference that took like a week to adjust but other than that i don't know felt feels normal feels like home i guess <laughs> yeah did you find that there were any um cultural differences honor when you when you did move here that you had to adjust here or did you feel like lmu kind of blended those edges and, and made you feel at home Oh, you, you're muted. Unless you don't want to answer, that's okay. <laughs> Control now. Hello. Yeah. Uh, the mute button got stuck. Um. Well. Uh. Th th there was. I don't know. For me, it felt natural. Maybe because I grew up watching a lot of American TV and movies. And uh, I had an experience in Europe with Erasmus. I had a student exchange program before. Um, living outside of my home country so it felt natural I don't know it didn't feel like and like getting the friends uh, the the environment like the first first weeks we had a thing with we had to collaborate with writers and come up with a movie pitch so we had to create like a pitch deck and then um, create this film that wouldn't be shot and there were no budget limitations anything we could cast anyone so that was super fun and I felt like you know this is what I came here for and then that made me feel like um, where I uh, wanted to be. That's great. Thank you. All right. We do have um, a question in the chat from Michael. Um, so in particular with writing and producing for television, um, he asked, is there a lot of reading? How is the testing and grading? Um, I can say for me, I've never had a test in this program. Um, and it depends on the class. I would I would say the reading there isn't much reading, honestly. Um, not that I've done all the reading. I would probably you should do your reading, but because um, I've definitely I've definitely done it all. But um, I yeah I haven't. I found that it hasn't been too much. I think the most reading I've ever had to do were in probably in TV history, which is your first semester. Um, there's a lot of reading in that. It was also like, I think the most assignment wise that wasn't, you know, right, like very writing, creative writing specific. Um, it wasn't that bad. But I also um, took a lot of English classes in undergrad. So I was just used to that amount of reading. Um, but I feel like then I think the next class besides like you'll be reading your peer scripts and things, but you, um, everything is like split up piecemeal. So you're uh, up until like your last year, you're never reading one script, one full script at once. Um, some, my screenwriting professor had us read a feature each week. Um, that wasn't too terrible because I think features read pretty quickly. Um, I would say I took, you don't have to take this class. It's an elective, but the most reading I've ever had to do was in adaptation, uh, which was a great class and I actually highly recommend it. But uh, there was just a lot of reading each week for that one specifically. I feel like other than that though, I have not found there to be a lot of like workload stuff. It's really just you're writing your pages um, for the most part. And the most the most reading you're doing is reading other people's scripts in your class and and preparing your notes to give in class. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much. Um, yeah, testing. It seems like um, there's not a lot of testing. I mean, we have to get grades, don't we? You have midterms and finals. That is your test. <laughs> Just basically, um, it depends on the course that you're taking at that time. Um, if you're taking elective where you're learning about studies and stuff like that, and you have to take information that you are reading and apply it, then that is the only time you're really doing it. But mostly it's more so of like projects that you're doing for your midterms and finals. So Perfect. yeah. That, that sounds great. Thank you so much. 
Thanks, everyone. We have another question in the chat. Um, is there an opportunity for grad students to live on campus, or is it recommended that they live off or near campus? So we do not have on-campus graduate housing. We do have a partnership, however, with an apartment complex. Uh, we call it PDO for short. It's called Playa del Oro. Uh, it's off of Lincoln Boulevard. It's about, what would you say, maybe a 10-minute drive to main campus. We've got a couple of students in here that uh, live there and they can tell you about their experience living at PDO. Oh, that's my favorite question. <laughs> um, okay, PDO, I mean, like I told people, I like it. Um, you do have a roommate that lives in the actual room with you. If you're a first year, nine times out of 10, you're gonna get that, I'm so sorry. It just, it just happens like that. It's a two bedroom, but three people live here. Once again, there's a single room and then we share those rooms. Now I want you to understand, this is not a dorm room. This is very much apartment size. So your bed might be a little close to your um, friend friend in there or your um roommate. You, it might not be your friend. So do what you must with that. Luckily, I like my roommate. We don't have no problems. Um, it's walking distance from main campus. It's a good 15, 20 minute walk, or if you're me and you're lazy, a good 30. But the shuttle does take you to PV, which is the campus we will be having our classes at. Um, it's nice. We next door to Arouse, um, a couple of food places around here, a liquor store across the street, do what you must with it. <laughs> nice little place. Come on here now. Um, package room is a little... But yeah, I, I I like it. Me, Ariana live here. So that's how we got close to not only are we writing for the screen, we're here and we work the same job. So we kind of stuck with each other, y'all. I will say that 70% um, of the rooms that are allocated for graduate students at the Playa del Oro complex are comprised of SFTV students. So um, yeah, you, you guys spend a lot of time together. Uh, in that capacity, but everyone loves each other, right, guys? Right, okay. <laughs> they probably they they probably won't like me saying this, but it is significantly less expensive to go through PDO directly than through LMU. See, Olivia, I didn't know you then. I didn't know this. This is new information. <laughs> so it's it's an av it's an average it's an average of four to five hundred dollars less per month to go directly through PDO. If you if you if you're having a single room. Would you say that this is uh, because of the meal plans or could you, could you elaborate a little bit? No, I'm pretty sure I'm, I haven't personally, my best friend went, she originally, I, I live in a house right now, but she originally went through LMU, LMU's housing and got her single bedroom in a two person apartment. Uh, but she and I are moving into PDO together and um, we like her monthly rent that is like taken out at the beginning of every semester and given to LMU is about $2,200 a month and going directly through PDO for the two of us to each have our own bedroom in a two bedroom apartment she's going to be paying about seventeen dollars to $1,800 a month I don't know exactly where that extra money comes from maybe it's like servicing fees to, or like convenience fees but if you can find a roommate ahead of time, someone to live with ahead of time, somebody that's going to be in your program or not necessarily in your program, but just anybody that's going to be going to grad school at LMU, I would recommend going through Playa del Oro directly. Yeah, thank you, Olivia. I should also add on that note that when you are admitted into the program, we do put all of the incoming cohorts into um I forget what the actual platform is called, but it's a way for you all to connect and find roommates through that way as well. We even had students go as far as to put listings in there and, and help each other out when it comes to finding housing in Los Angeles, because it's out there. Um, it's just a little competitive in the sense that when you find something, you got to jump on it um, because other people want that spot too. Um, Angel, go ahead. Yes, thanks. So for the commuter student, uh, I noticed that they said that we park at main campus and we can shuttle to the, uh, yes, is that correct? Yes. What's the what's the parking situation like uh, normally? And what's our travel time from main campus to uh, the TV campus, as it were? Yeah, so I main commuted. Oh, oh sorry, ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, 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 I... I feel like I'm taking over the conversation, but I commuted my first semester from Santa Clarita. 
Um, it was tough, but uh, I definitely would recommend getting it's I think it's because the, the parking situation is kind of a mess at the Playa Vista campus. It's very difficult to find street parking. We have tried to get them to there's plenty of parking at the building, but Facebook owns the building and is not willing to give us that parking. So either you pay $20 and give that $20 to Facebook or you find a spot on the street. But you can also go to main campus if you have a parking pass uh, and take the shuttle. It takes about 15 minutes to get from main campus to Playa Vista campus. I will yeah. say, though, as someone who does, I just park on the street at Playa Vista. It is not impossible to find street parking, although sometimes uh, they block things off for no reason. Um, but I think that it's kind of just like timing when you arrive. Like I sometimes will just come like an hour early. Um, I do and do work here because like this is a nice place to work anyway. And I don't do very good work at home to begin with. Um, so I think just timing it so that you like um, there's a yoga there's a yoga studio right nearby. So like, for example, I have class at 1130 in the morning tomorrow. The I know the yoga class gets out at 1015. So that's usually when I arrive because um, I know I can snag their parking spots. So look up the yoga studio schedule if you're going to come park on the street. And also really quickly, the school shuttle does have an app so you can see where it goes in the time frame it's coming. And you can follow it's a little dot. Just follow it, but you'll be straight regardless. Thanks everyone. Lauren? Sorry, I lowered my hand and didn't unmute. Um, this is like a subset of that question. Um, I don't expect anyone to have the answer, but if someone does, that'd be great. Um, I ride a motorcycle, so I don't know if anyone knows anything about motorcycle parking or if that's easier. Because I know for on my campus, like a parking pass for motorcycles, like a third of the price and like makes everything easier. So I was hoping that would also be the case at y'all's campus. <laughs> Yes, parking for bikes is significantly cheaper. I don't have the exact numbers, but I can pull that link and provide it for you in the chat in a moment. Um, and then I have not seen very many bikes on campus, so I don't think you would have a hard time with that. Also, that's really cool. <laughs> I did ride motorcycles in Turkey, but when I came here, I wanted to also buy a motorcycle. But then I started commuting with an electric scooter to school and it's like 15 minutes and you don't need any parking and it's convenient there is like a bike path that almost goes the, all the way from my house to the lmu campus and then the other campus is like only 10 minutes with that electric scooter so they're quite close too thank you brian wait so uh electric scooters are allowed on lmu right yes Okay, because uh, in my undergraduate study, they recently banned electric scooters. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're not banned. Uh, we okay. just you know, want everyone to be mindful of pedestrians, but people skateboard. They have their electric scooters. They have bikes. Um, yeah. And anything. Um, I've seen like the the uni unicycle type electric ones i don't know what they're called but they're like these hoverboard looking things i've seen those a couple times segways Ooh. yeah uh not segway uh, you're like balancing on it's like one wheel and the board sits over it oh uh, one of those i, I yeah. think it's called one wheel yeah <laughs> one wheel that's genius um yeah so different modes of transportation are welcome on campus um all right any other additional questions i don't see anything else in the chat unless i have missed them. No, okay. Um, I actually had a question real quick. Um, again, thank you guys so much for your time. Um, so I had a quick question regarding uh, hardware that you guys are bringing to campus. Cause I know um, someone mentioned it earlier. Uh, sometimes you're gonna be up till, you know, one o'clock working on something. And so that means that you might not have access to a lab at a particular point. Um, so with that being said, do they provide you guys with like apps that you can use? Like, for example, like first draft, is that something provided in your tuition cost that you can then uh, download on your computer? And with that, do you recommend like Mac over Windows or anything like that, just for in terms of uh, being more combat compatible with the files you guys are using?
Kate or Honor, could either of you answer that? So um, you don't get outside access to the software that you are learning on. Um, if you want to have that on your own computer um, at home, you would need to purchase that on your own. That being said, there are student discounts for that kind of stuff. Um, but the school does provide all of that software in our computer labs and um, in our editing bays. So you should be able to find time to use the software on campus for free. Um, we have a computer lab that is open outside of when it's being used for class. So there's definitely lots of hours in the days where you can go and work on your own projects. I know tons of my peers are in there editing, especially right now. Um, so, and then there are also editing bays that you can reserve for a more like private editing experience that have all the software that you would need for class as well. So yeah, you don't have access to that stuff outside of um, the computers provided, but that being said, there is a lot of opportunity to access on campus. About Mac and PC, I'll add, um, most of the people uses Macs and there are computer labs that are PC and also there are some other computer labs that has Macs. Um, our editing class was, we used Macs. Now I'm taking virtual production class. They're using PCs. I myself use PC and didn't have any problems like compatibility issues. And so you can uh, use whatever you want. Yeah, another recommendation is having an external hard drive. Um, that way you can use the different um, modalities in between. All right, any other additional questions? If not, I have one. Okay, um, so being that you're all in different years, uh, what is the biggest challenge you have had to endure so far in the program? Don't call it. Go I'm ahead. Quiet. <laughs> Um, my biggest challenge, y'all, I think, if you couldn't tell, I talk a lot. So naturally, my characters talk a lot, too. I had to learn. My hardest part was, like, not being so dialogue heavy and learning how to show it rather than tell it. And, you know, of course, taking feedback is always a little hard, too. So you have to learn how to embrace that as well. But yeah, just challenging myself as a writer, period, had to be my hardest part in my first semester. And really believing in my craft, no matter what feedback you get, just knowing that this is your story for a reason, you create this baby for a reason, and to just see it through. I think for me, it was similar. It was like a writing workload related thing. Um, I feel like first semester, second year for WPTV was really brutal. Um, like we all got through it and it was fine, but you're writing, you're writing a drama pilot and a comedy pilot at the same time. And I've never written two pilots at once. Now I know I can do it. I just don't think that you should do it because it was, it was like, there were all these different characters bouncing around in my head. I didn't know what was what. Um, so I feel like it was, an interesting challenge in like, you know, balancing work, because that was, I think, like one of my heaviest workload semesters. Um, so I would like, I feel like I learned some things that I had not known even. I also think just because I took a few years off after I graduated undergrad. So I think just generally getting used to doing homework over again, took a learning curve, um, but got through it. So it's possible. It just was really rough for a time. For me personally, I think the hardest part was something that we talked about earlier, which is balancing all of your work. Um, for the film and television production program, there I was personally working on tons of sets 
um, there was a point where I was like pretty much working on a set every weekend, um, which is a lot. You have, you know, school all week and then you work on a set for three to four days in the weekend. And that's like, there's no break time. Um, so I, a lot of learning about that was learning to say no <laughs> and not work on everything. Um, but it is, it's so, it's difficult because you want to help your peers and you obviously want to be working on projects. Um, especially me, I love working on set. Um, so it was a lot of learning about what my actual capacity is um, and, you know, not putting so many people's projects over my own work, because at the end of the day, I do still have to make my own project. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of learning about, um, you know, making sure that I have time to do my own work. I have time to, um, fill my own cup outside of work, um, but yeah, you can, it's very easy to overcommit yourself. Um, and I wish, like, I see it happen all the time. <laughs> um, it's hard to learn that lesson by hearing it. You kind of have to, I think a lot of people have to experience it. Um, but yeah, it's very easy to be doing too much, but very fun as well. Okay, I guess I'll go. So I have a couple of things that I had to endure. It was a lot. Um, um, I think uh, one of my big ones right now, like Jamaria said, is taking a lot of feedback and criticism. Um, you may come with a story or a project that you feel extremely passionate about and all of these people are telling you different things or giving you different suggestions and you don't want to come off as a person who can't receive criticism. So you try to maybe take on too much. And it's also learning having like a relationship. You have to treat your work as a relationship now. That's what I've learned. You have to learn that you're going to love this story. Oh, it's great. I came up with this. And then after a while, you're going to look at that story. It's not going to look like the same person and you're going to hate it. <laughs> and it's a lot of revising, um, especially if you're in writing for the screen. I'm not sure about WPTV students, but you're going to be reworking and revising your stories. Oh, so it's, it's all about like hating and loving and falling in love again and starting over and just embracing the process. I think that's also the thing. I think a lot of people are like, oh, I have this great story. I'm a flesh now. I'm a writer. It's going to be done. Like, no, it's a lot of revising. It's a lot of reworking. Just fall in love with the process. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with the work. So, yeah. Is that everyone? Yes, okay, awesome. Um, any other questions that may have come up? Alex, yeah. Hi, um, so I'm applying for the um, producing and TV writing program. So I'm curious about the fact that I know that the thesis um, class involves producing um, a documentary and as an undergraduate who did a general filmmaking degree, I'm already acquainted with short filmmaking and stuff like that. So I'm curious about what opportunities specifically as a student for that program are available to actively make short films. I know that like, it sounds like there are some electives that overlap between programs where that might be a possibility. I'm kind of curious as to basically like what the ratio is between like actual script writing and then like how much time you get to pursue potential short films. So you're for writing and producing for TV, yes? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I'm in the midst of my of post-production for my thesis um, since I'm in third year. Um, so I feel like we, I would say uh, there's opportunities. You as a WPTV student can also go be on other people's sets. Um, so there's a lot of production students that need crew 
all the time. So that's just one way to be involved in um, other people's films. Uh, we have a little production like fundamentals class, I think in the first year, it was backwards for my class because we were still doing like a COVID format. So we did ours in the spring. Um, but uh, so you will make us a little like short in that class, um, just like during your class time, just to, you know, get yourself acquainted with like some of the camera equipment and things like that. Um, but, you know, when you go to do your own thesis, you get to, you know, bring on your own crew because it's part of the producing um, aspect of it. So there will be, there's, there's lots of opportunities to meet people that will help you uh, to get more crew and figure that sort of thing out. I would say that's like, that's our only opportunity for like making a short is that little production fundamentals class. Um, I haven't heard of too, too many people really doing I have like a couple of friends that have done their own like uh, little production things outside of school, but those aren't affiliated with school. I think that's just like they wanted to take the initiative and do that. So if you feel like you want to take the initiative and do that, you can also do that. But it is we are doing a lot of writing and then like talking about like the basics of the producing and like being like leading a team of people, I would say. Um, and for your thesis, you can sort of do whatever you want. You are actually making like a narrative product. You you can uh, you can some like Kara did a proof of concept for a longer pilot. You can do like um, sort of a sizzle reel for a, for for a pilot or a, or a longer film. I'm doing a short film. You can there you can do there are a lot of options for what you can do for your actual third year thesis. Um, we had our program review last week, and those of us that were in that group recommended to the evaluators that they add during our second year um, a class in which we have to produce something else, like we have to make something else because we all think it would be a really good idea for us to, to do something first year, second year, and third year, so that by the time we get to our thesis, we're all more experienced in making something. So I don't know if that's actually going to be added, but it was a universal recommendation from all of us on all of us WPTV students on that panel. So I think there's a, there's a good chance maybe that by the time you're in your second year, that will be hopefully implemented. Um, but yeah, so there's that first, that, that first production fundamentals class and then the thesis, but um, you, I know you mentioned documentaries. I think I don't think docs are allowed, but I think you can do and pretty much any other narrative thing that you want that's short form for your thesis. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any additional questions? Michael, go ahead. Thank you. I'm gonna unmute it. Okay. Um, so yeah, I have a crazy question. Um I'm kind of inspired to do like a feature. I'm just wondering if there's any students uh, that are doing like a whole feature, even if it's not super that expensive. Uh, I'm just very drawn to doing a finished feature. Is anybody working on a feature? Can we do a feature, like a whole movie? We're capped at, I think, 15 minutes for length. So it has to be shorter than 15 minutes for our thesis. Okay. So there's no way we can get approval to do like a whole movie. I mean, cause everything is there, the acting and we have everybody on board. We also have, we also only have four days to film for our thesis. So that adds to that, all of that adds up to how much we can do in that time. I think you just answered my question. <laughs> yeah, that does it. Okay. All right, thank you. Joseph, I thought I saw your hand up. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh, and you're muted. This work. There, can you hear me now? Yes. Ah, uh, good. All right, I'm a retired psychologist uh, and I attended Loyola like in 1966 uh, and majored in English then. I really liked it there, but ended up ultimately going back to the Pacific Northwest. And I live now in Portland, Oregon. I'm retired. I do a lot of photography. But looking at you all uh, here, I would guess that being involved in production and uh, 
is it writing in production? Is that the uh, kind of careers that are uh, being talked about here? Anyway, as a group, uh, you seem extremely intelligent, extroverted, congenial. Uh, those characteristics seem to be in every one of you. Uh, and I, I, I myself am very much an introvert and, and very much watchful for uh, my information. Whereas, uh, and that's a, that's a classic introvert. Classic extroverts are everybody else that's on the screen. Uh, and I just wonder, is that true? That that, that career selects for really intelligent, really engaged, really cooperative extroverts. Looks like it, but that's that's it. I don't know anything about it at all, and this is my first uh, you know contact with 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 that uh, what would you call it a career group. Uh, and so I don't have much to say or much to ask except that. Uh, it, it's, it really struck, struck me after about 10 minutes watching, gee whiz, they, they're they all really engaged in what they're doing and they're really excited about it and they really like to work as a team, so on. Yeah, thank you for that observation, Joseph. I think that's one of the main things that distinguishes LMU from other programs, right? From other schools at other pro programs, other schools, excuse me, um, is that our students, as you can see today, are are very driven, are very passionate, and they're very collaborative and supportive of one another and want to see each other succeed. I think that is the main pillar uh, that I take away whenever, whenever I get to interact with, with LMU students, especially our graduate students, because um, although our undergraduate students are also very professional in the film school. I think there's a different caliber of student that we require at the graduate level. Um, and those are just a few things that we ask everyone to bring to the table. But um, I know some of you spoke about, you know, being a little bit on the Shire side, but um, yeah, can can you maybe speak to what helped you come out of your your shell? Other than like the, the courses, right? You talk about the writer's room and how you're forced to engage um, in discourse regarding your work, but are there other elements that you feel contributed to that? Um, I, I am very much an introvert. I am, I, I'm not extroverted at all. A lot of this is just kind of me putting something on because um, I'm an actor as well. But uh, I feel like, I know my limits in some respects in that sort of thing, which kind of helps the knowing when to like be on and when it's like, no, I gotta go home um, and not interact with anyone for at least a day or two, um, which I have done before because sometimes uh, some of my friends, there's like a running joke where it's like, oh, we won't see Kara at that. She wouldn't go to that um, just because it's like not my scene. Um, but I think that I think that just my personality is that I get excited when I'm excited about something that I'm doing, then I maybe don't seem as introverted. That's probably, it's probably part of it, I would say. I would say that in WPTV, something I've observed is that most of us also have ADHD, <laughs> uh, which adds to the hype that like once we get into a hyperfixation on something and when we're really passionate about something, it sort of gets drawn out of us. I also just want to say that I feel like this group of students might be a little bit skewed because we are all in positions where we are um, teaching, like TAing or giving tours a lot. So we are willingly choosing to be in those outward facing roles. But I know a lot of students who are much more shy and reserved, like especially there's places where you need to be super outward facing and there's also places where you can um, be more individual and interact with a lot less people like a lot of um, times Shiro people will find their way to editing because it's your own project and you only have to work with a few other people um, whereas a lot of directors um, have to be working and talking to people all day. Um, so they're definitely more outgoing. But yeah, there's, I would say there's a wide range of 
personalities for sure. Mm -hmm. Thanks everyone. Um, we do have five minutes left. So I do wanna make sure that if there are any um, lingering questions that those get asked, um, if not, uh, again, I did provide my email address so you all can reach out if you wanna connect with me directly. Um, as Kate mentioned, um, Kate gives campus tours of the Playa Vista campus as does Ariana and Jamaria. So if you do register, um, you are likely to tour with one of them and you are also encouraged to pick their brains further um, on that campus tour. You would check out Playa Vista initially and then shuttle up to the main campus and check out um, our sound stages and other facilities in there as well. Um, if the classroom is not occupied or the theater is not occupied by a class, then you have full access to check those out while you're here with us during your visit. Um, and then if you have registered for our campus tour this Friday, I look forward to seeing you in person. Um, there will be a brief presentation at the Welcome Center at the Charles Vonderau building. I believe it starts at 11 a.m., but I will be there myself. Um, and then we'll, we'll do some of the campus tour there, too. Um, but yeah, are there any additional questions at this time? Ryan. Uh, to, re to, re to reiterate, uh, I actually signed up for the uh, campus store on Friday. I'll, I'll, I'll be there with my mother. Uh, it's on the main campus and not the SFTV campus? Correct. It begins at main campus. So it'll be a, a quick like 15 minute presentation. And then we will, uh, those of you that have selected um, to visit the Playa Vista campus, once we finish the main campus portion, we'll shuttle you over to Playa Vista. All right. Makes sense. Awesome. All right, well, that concludes our open house session for the School of Film and Television. To our current graduate students, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate your insight and giving, you know, all the insight that you have. Um, and to everyone else, thank you again for being here. Um, I will quickly share my screen so that you can see what next sessions are lined up for this evening. So financial aid begins at 6 p.m. PST, career professional development at 6.30, and 7 p.m. for the international admission session. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And thank you again. Thank you.